The Army will be responsible for the inside cordon and the SQ for the outside cordon. John will work with you to sort out the details. It's a transfer from the SQ to the Army. Understood. I extend my government's thanks and my personal thanks for the effort the SQ has put in to keep a lid on the crisis. Night after night in Shadow Gate. Suffering every imaginable kind of abuse and injury. I know your men are getting exhausted, but as you have to admit, it is time we increase the pressure. General? Phase one will take eight hours to mount, 24 to complete. The first eight to 10 hours will be terrible for the SQ. While the SQ is withdrawing and the army is not yet entrenched, the Mohawks will have a wide open window. We will deploy in a military fashion and it will be alarming for the population to see. Volatile. The army's preparing to move in. People are going to be very tense. I'm absolutely unequipped to do this. I know nothing about the background or anything else. Uh, we have to have somebody that the public won't see as partisan in any way. A English-speaking Quebec. Somebody who won't faint when facing the media. Is there a plan? You'll have one mandate, Alex. The removal of the barricades. Period. I'm assuming I'd be reporting directly to Chacha, rather than taking instructions from the entire committee. Moroni sending in Bernard Roy as the federal negotiator. But you have to understand, Alex, that Roy has no mandate until the barricades come down. So it'll be up to you. Oh, uh, Roy's gonna have an RCMP officer with him at all times. Maroni's orders, we can assign Celtic protection for you if you'd like. No bloody way. Their chances of being shot at are a hundred times greater than mine. parameters has the Prime Minister given you for these negotiations? The position of the Government of Canada has always been and continues to be dictated by its desire to deal with long-standing grievances of the Mohawk leaders and the community of Ghanasatake. However, there will be no talks or discussions on issues of substance or on process as long as the barricades remain and firearms are used to provoke negotiations. That is the position of the Prime Minister. The Mohawks say that they don't need to argue sovereignty, that the agreement they signed in the Pines gives them that recognition. Mr. Patterson, any comment? We're ready to negotiate this morning. In fact, too much time has already passed. Thank you. Mr. Patterson, please. Mr. Patterson. Ms. Gabriel? We come here with good hearts. Our people want to have these talks in the Pines, where it all started and what it's all about. We have conceded to be here despite our history with the Sulpicians, but we worry the SQ or the Army will create an incident while we're gone. Ms. 
Gabriel, Miss Gabriel, please. For many years, we have observed the confusion of the Canadian people and Canadian governments over the issue of our sovereignty, our governments, and our nationhood. It is imperative we bring clarity to these issues. The Haudenosaunee Confederacy meets all the fundamental requirements of nationhood a permanent population, a definite territory, a government, and the ability to enter into relations with other nations. We draw our authority from the Gayanara, Goa, the great law of peace, not from the Constitution of Canada or the United States. The great law of peace tells us that should a great calamity threaten the Haudenosaunee, then he who is able to climb to the top of the great tree of the long leaves may do so. When he reaches the top of the tree, he shall look about in all directions. And if he should see evil things approaching, then he should call to the people of the Haudenosaunee assembled beneath the great tree of peace and say, a calamity threatens your happiness. We see our role as achieving a peace, not starting a war. Our position is to maintain phase one. Let the negotiations go on as long as possible, hoping that they succeed, or that the warriors tire and give up. However, if we are ordered to phase two, we must be prepared to go to phase three. Colonel Degla. Sir. I'm concerned about the consequences of removing the barricades without the Mohawks' consent. We must plan for the security of the citizens in the area, since we would move in with an overpowering force. 8,000 to 10,000 people might have to be evacuated. Major Tromblin. Well, we know uh, that there are women at the barricades, but uh, we don't know about children. What do we do if the women decide to stand with their children? We will not fire if there are women and children in the front lines. Gentlemen, the politicians can tell us whatever they want. But there's a point at which our responsibility is greater than theirs. Finally, the army is here, ladies and gentlemen. And what is the priority of our authorities, our governments in Quebec and Ottawa? Nothing. Just sit and talk and talk and talk. Come on, get the army in there and get this over with. We don't care how many casualties there are. It doesn't matter if a couple hundred die, it'll be over. We'll bury it all and get on with our lives. get back to the dismantling of the barricades? 
The Haudenosaunee approached these negotiations with the firm belief that theirs is and has always been a sovereign nation and that their relationship with other governments... Look, give me something to go back to the government with. Give me some chronological idea of the order of the barricades coming down. Give me some plan. What about the weapons? Assurance of amnesty for all the men and their safety to leave the community without harm must be guaranteed first. You've read the great law of peace to you, little brother. You should know that we would never put down our arms. Look, we understand that. But you need to understand the government can't walk away from this issue. If you don't make a gesture, this thing is going to go on and on. You've got to make a move. We already offered to participate in an independent inquiry into the death of Corporal LeMay. We need to discuss that. Participation in the coroner's inquest is negotiable. Participation in the police investigation is non-negotiable. We've heard the theories that he was investigating corruption within the SQ, and they got him. They set him up and they got him. Why else would a corporal be on the front lines? He should have been back in a command position. I know nothing about that. No one is more interested in the truth about LeMay's death than we are. If you do something about the arms, and you give me some kind of timetable on the barricades, I will get you an inquiry. But I can't go in and ask for it unless I can show that you're moving on the barricades. Roy actually said that. Yes. I wanted to be sure I got it right and wrote it down. I want to talk about arms. Your subjects don't interest me. Mulroney sent Roy in for show, a sham, knowing nothing what happened, just waiting for the army to move in. I tried to start again with the lands, even though I know we need to talk about weapons, but we need to talk about more than weapons. I have to say, the situation is not very good. Well, just keep me talking. As long as they're talking, you're holding discussions, it's positive. I don't think the army will make a move. My orders are to escort the bus to the monastery. We have received death threats directed at you. From where? Who? I'm only told it was some warriors, your guys. It's the point to advance their position. Our orders are to accompany you for your protection. This is intimidation, that's all it is. It's bullshit. The warriors are our protection. We don't need your protection. So leave. My orders are to escort you through the perimeter for your safety. I don't care what your orders are. We don't need your protection. So leave! Go! Our liaison's being contacted about every move that's been made because that was one of the agreements. This is an offensive action. That's our land over there that you're encroaching upon with those tanks, and we want you out of here. This move that you're making will be the last one. From here on in, I guess we'll be burying each other because we won't move no more. My mandate here as a soldier, as a military personnel called here by our government, is to make sure we take a position on the ground to ensure the security and safety of everyone around here. Now I know we can do that safely without using our weapons. No Canadian soldier will fire one shot. 
first. We're not going to be the ones who pull the trigger. We're going to go back to that table and we're going to do what we have to do to come to a peaceful resolution. Negotiations have not gone well, in part because I have no control of the SQ. Every commitment I made was undermined by them. And now I'm told they're ready to lay over 1,000 criminal charges. I've been thinking a lot about the Iroquois Confederacy. I think Quebec and Canada should recognize the Confederacy as the only legitimate stable and legal entity in the Iroquois world to make agreements with. I think direct negotiations should begin as soon as possible. That would mean negotiating with the warriors first. I can arrange that. Safe passage behind the SQ lines into Ganesataki. What I'm asking is that you help me fashion something, something that can be acceptable to both the Mohawks and the government. You have to understand, we don't support your financial ambitions, particularly the tobacco trade. So our relationship with the warriors is strained at best. As long as there's a glimmer of hope that the talks at La Trep will bear fruit, we will not get involved at all. We will not get involved for political reasons within the Confederacy. The SQ's raid made the warriors respectable. There's a reluctancy to abandon them, a loyalty for what they had done, a feeling that somehow they must not be betrayed. They are, after all, Mohawks. So, we will come in but only at the 12th hour, one minute before midnight, before the shooting starts. Once all negotiations have failed, we'll keep ourselves available for a while. The problem is you only want to discuss sovereignty in some way or another. Always asking us for sovereignty. Big brother, we're not asking you to grant us sovereignty. We've always been a sovereign nation. Little brother, Quebec knows what it takes to claim nationhood. We're not asking you to do anything but treat us accordingly. We don't need to argue sovereignty anymore. We're at an impasse, as long as you refuse our offer about the deposit of arms, and further, don't even bother to make a counterproposal. And give away all our bargaining power? 
You say you want to talk about land. I have no mandate to discuss land. You're not going to settle a land issue here. Sovereignty, nationhood, settle this. Then they'll have to discuss those issues with you. Now what are we supposed to do with this? The Mohawk Nation forbids the government to arrest or charge anyone remotely connected to the events of July 11. You're pressing for amnesty here. And my government, for one, can't agree to amnesty. Amnesty implies that we've done something wrong. We have done nothing wrong. We don't need to be forgiven anything. We are a sovereign people defending our land, defending our burial grounds and the pines from a golf course. I can go no further. I'm going to report to the government. And whether I'm back here on Monday depends on what you are prepared to do. You know, you keep saying that you're negotiating at the barrel of a gun. But when you go home, you go to a safe house. Your family doesn't have to worry about an army or a police force attacking them in the middle of the night. When are you going to guarantee our safety? You have nothing more for me to tell those people. I don't think they have anything to tell me either. Unless there's a specific opening, a real reason to go back. I won't do it. If the federal government goes back to the table uh, and settles something, we will look like fools. They won't go back alone, so it's not going to happen. Unless you and Mulrooney get together and give them an inquiry. If you want, I can go back and tell them that. But I won't go back to Stonewall anymore. We're gonna get those goddamn barricades down and the bridge open. That woman. Ellen Gabriel. All the problems of the native people are in her soul. And she'll be killed. And you will never, never, never be able to explain that. If she dies, the thing that'll be remembered is that the government of Quebec sent 5,000 troops in to shoot one woman. We did our best on negotiation. Let's move on. Excuse me. I really need the help of the Confederacy to keep the negotiated settlement alive. How much time do we have? It's one minute to midnight. The toughest challenge for any government is to defend democracy against people who do not believe in democracy. My government's patience and generosity has been answered with intransigence and bad faith. Therefore, in accordance with part 11 of the National Defense Act, I've asked the army to dismantle the barricades. We will not fire first. But we will take such action as is necessary for self-defense, which depends completely on Mohawk reaction. It is my duty to warn the citizens of Oka and Chateauguay they might be ordered to evacuate their homes. That's all I have for you now. Thank you. There are police reports that you have all kinds of weapons. Machine guns, anti-tank weapons, homemade explosives. We don't have APCs or cannons or... ...jet fighters like the Army does. So, you know, we're kind of outgunned here. Barasa thinks that crushing the Mohawks will solve the problem. He'll have a civil war in his hands. If they attack the Mohawks, they will have declared war on all native people. 
and we hear it's happening now on the bridge. The Mohawks are on the Mercier Bridge leaving the reserve. Come on, people, we can't let this happen. We need to stop them. We need to get out there and stop them. Negotiations were suspended. With Patterson and Lavoie, yes. But I believe it's still possible to get an agreement with them through the Confederacy. I've been pressing Sidden for a federal commitment on the lands. This is Roger Gagnon, came here as his representative. With all due respect, Roger's an assistant deputy minister. Sidden's just kicking it downstairs. Joe, please. Why yeah. do you think you can succeed where we failed? Because we won't be asking Quebec or Canada to sign an agreement with a masked warrior. And because we're not carrying any guns. We have drafted a very comprehensive agreement. Under an interpretation, you say, the Confederacy and the Mohawks maintain their position on their claim to sovereignty. Nothing in this agreement shall be deemed to be an admission to such claim by Canada or Quebec. It's not the end of the clause, Joe. Nor shall the agreement be deemed to constitute an abandonment of the position expressed by the Confederacy and the Mohawks. The draft does call upon governments to recognize the long and friendly relationships and alliances between the Confederacy, the Mohawks, and the Crown. It's kind of a sideways acceptance of the two-row wampum treaty. How am I supposed to sell this to my people? The warriors insist on amnesty. Look under Section 5, Joe. The agreement contains safeguards to avoid the wholesale arrests of innocent people in a very charged atmosphere with a very angry police force. Shit, John. You invite me here and I walk into this. willing to give the order to shoot. If you just keep backing up without shooting, you're gonna look like a bunch of fools. What's your proposal? The army and the Mohawks will jointly dismantle the barricades. Now, the army will conduct no raids or searches for guns at Kanawaki after the bridge is open. 
as long as the guns are kept out of sight and the warriors stop wearing masks and camouflage gear. If we don't see any guns, then there aren't any guns. And as far as I'm concerned, the weapons are all gone. The Army's orders are to take down the barricades by force if they're not dismantled voluntarily. The Minister of Justice is hardline. He will not accept your demands for safeguards in the event of arrests, including the presence of lawyers during questioning. What about a Canadian version of the U.S. Miranda rule? Well, it, let's put it in the draft agreement. Hmm? We got an agreement to open the bridge. Very good. Okay, so. We have a process for turning over the land around the golf course to Ganasataki. We have a process for removing the Ganasataki barricades in an orderly fashion. We have an agreement for destroying warriors' weapons in a manner that is acceptable to the government. And we have a process, very important, for reconciliation between the affected communities. And an economic plan to replace the dependency on illegal commercial activities. Roger, will you sign off on this for Sidden? I'm only here to listen. I've been given no mandate to negotiate anything. The federal government's position is no negotiations are taking place. You're gonna let the deal go down the drain? I'll sit and get a commitment. We've done what we could. Well, there's no rioting in Shattergate today. The crowd is jubilant. The barricades that blocked the Mercier Bridge all summer are coming down. And in a total departure from the tension of the past two months, Mohawk warriors and Canadian soldiers are dismantling the barricades and repairing the road together. With each swipe the Army's heavy equipment makes at the barricade, a roar We never heard from Ganawagi that an agreement had been reached. Once that bridge is open, it's evident they can do what they like now and they're doing it. We have tanks and machine guns pointed at our heads. Hundreds of SQ officers are waiting to come in. But we will not surrender. We've done nothing wrong. Mom's at home crying. She said you went to her to say goodbye. She said she's trying to stay strong for you, but she can't. Please, Joe, just put down your gun and go home. I talked against the guns. But none of you would listen. And where are you now?
are to advance on the warrior defenses. Company A will remain in Oka. Company B will initiate a move towards the reserve. Company C will lead the encirclement operation. Major Tremblay will advance south, close the cordon, reduce the perimeter around the warriors' positions. from that car. You're moving out with that, no problem. Don't point that gun at me, boy. You're not pointing any guns. Move out. Move out. You're not going to shoot. He didn't open fire. Move out. Move out. This is clan. I'm not leaving. My APC is still moving forward. Nobody has anything to gain by killing anybody. We'll bury each other here. I'm not going to shoot first. I have a job to do, and I'm going to do it. They're through North Pole. They're here. Perimeter. I don't intend to fight. I was ordered to move forward. I move forward. You understand the damage you'll suffer when a bullet rips through your body. 
My high-powered bullets will eviscerate you. Getting nervous, perhaps? You should be. You're number one on my list. treatment center. We're going to the community center. We're staying with our community. The army wants to cut you off from us. We want some of you to join us at the treatment center witness what they do to us, because none of us will be around to tell the story. I just want to see his face before I kill him. to be respectful. Many of the warriors are Vietnam vets. It's their flag. Bitch. Eat it, footpacker. Don't lock and load. They're trying to get on your nerves. You're honorable men. You have to be a lot smarter than they are. We've reached our objective. We will go no further. The perimeter is closed. We have no plans to attack. 
Does the army know there are women and children inside? Yes. Seven children, 19 women, 30 men, and a few advisors, according to our reconnaissance. Looks like the treatment center's ideal for a long-term siege. The armed people can either lay down their weapons and accept the offer of the Canadian forces to be placed in custody, or confine themselves indefinitely. Either way, the ultimate result will be the same. They will submit to the Canadian criminal justice system. The Army's got tanks and stuff parked on my front lawn. Yeah, me too. Nights I go out and whoo, try to scare them. <laughs> You're gonna get yourself shot. You sound like my husband. My kids cry at night. They're scared, we're all scared. My mom moved in with us, afraid to be alone at her place. We've been setting up the classrooms for families. You can stay here. <sighs> Haven't slept well for days. They keep shining those big lights on the house. It's just total harassment. Somebody should call the cops. Gentlemen, the Army has proposed terms of surrender to the warriors. Upon their surrender, the SQ will conduct their investigations. If the federal government thinks the warriors will just deliver themselves into the hands of the SQ, they're deluded. All the more reason why we should resume negotiations directly with the Confederacy. General. The Premier Ministre feels that we have now done all that we can do. He thanks you. I will continue to monitor the situation with General Foster, but otherwise, the committee can stand down. Thank you. Committee? Committee? This government has sat on its hands. It's thwarted me in every direction, and now we're willing to abdicate our responsibility to the Army. The Army will fulfill its orders to restore public security with or without the warrior's consent. John, listen to me. Listen to me. You can still do something about this. If you don't, bloodshed is a very real possibility. Forget Mohawks. These are people. And they're willing to die. And when their men fall, the women will pick up the guns. Do you understand? I work with the warriors. Convince them not to provoke violence. Spiritual advisors? Yes. Faith keepers. All right. But let's be clear. Neither you nor any other Mohawk negotiator will be allowed through army lines to the treatment center. Names? Terry Dogstater.
Bob Anton. Ellen, I know you want to help, but you shouldn't be here. I can't go home. The SQ have a cruiser parked right outside her door. Yeah, but who knows how many guns are pointed at your head right now? I don't want to put anybody in danger. Go. Get off sight. Been poked at, stabbed, bayoneted. How do we know they didn't do nothing to it? Like put poison. Look, they're gonna cholesterol us to death. <laughs> <laughs> what you're doing, dropping flares on innocent women and children. Your kids are going to pay for this, man. Let me tell you. Hey, Fuck. come on. Hey, cal calm down. Hey, come on. Inside. Hey, come on. Calm down. Come on. Calm down. Calm down. That's a door. That's a door. That's a door. Randy! Oh, he's breathing. Susan, the gauze pads, please. He needs a doctor. Well, bring your man out, and we'll get him to the hospital. If he leaves, he'll be arrested. We want our own doctor brought in. No, I can't allow that. Let me send my paramedic in to examine him. Only if we take him in and only if he's blindfolded.
Your guy uh, needs to go to a trauma center. His injuries are serious, uh, possible skull fracture, and uh, he's lost quite a lot of blood. He needs a radiography of his head. You guarantee he'll be brought back? I'm going to promise he'll be brought back as soon as he's OK. Can I have that in writing? You're going to have to take my word. We took your word before that you let us know on any moves you made. And now look what we have, an injured man. The Joint Commission of Iroquois representatives, federal and provincial officials, and human rights leaders would decide the outcome of any criminal prosecutions of the warriors. Okay. And investigate any violations of human rights and international law that may have occurred at, at Ganesataki during the standoff. Okay. Make sure it says may have. Now, come on. If we propose that, they'll want something serious in exchange. The warriors will lay down their arms but will stay at the treatment center under the custody of military police. The weapons would be sealed in a neutral place until the Joint Commission decided how to dispose of them. We can't say that. Why? Why are we even responding to Foster's so-called offer? It, it, it proposes a resolution that belittles the crisis. God damn it, you guys. We gotta stop ignoring the reality of the situation. We have to do something. Okay. Tighten your grip. Just Doc Stater? Yes, sir.
The Warriors are just protecting their public image by vowing to never surrender. Uh, they need a way to save face. I'm not so sure about that. <sighs> Jesus. I just wish we could keep away from that word surrender. What's the government proposing? Throw the bloody media out completely. And just get rid of them. <sighs> then, maybe after dark, we move in with vans. They would lay their weapons down, get on board, and we take off to Farnham. No one would be seen, and no one would be humiliated. The media would only find out the next morning that they're all gone. <laughs> I'll try to sell it. Great offer, huh? Really good offer, hmm? Throw out the media, lay down our arms so they can come in and slaughter us sight unseen. Why, why are we even trying to sell this to the people? What's the point? Call Lord and see what he thinks. The Warriors have been considering a peace proposal. But if you keep turning the screw like this, we'll dig in and all negotiations will be off. The army's killed the power. It's best to stay down here. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning and watch the white eyes withering in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs. Wilfred Owen, documenting the horrors of World War I. It is sweet and honorable to die for one's country. group of special prosecutors. This does not amend existing laws. It's what you agreed to after the FLQ crisis. The final decision about who to charge, who to free belongs to the prosecutors, not the police, not the army. Why are you persisting in this? I would prefer you follow the government line, period. Well, the government line hasn't gotten us anywhere. Even if the army achieves a surrender without bloodshed, the fundamental problem remains. We have to deal with their grievances, not crush them with the army, and then say, it's settled. Had we dealt with the land claims from the start, this Oka crisis wouldn't have happened. Spare us a civics lesson, John. Fine. 
This needs to end with an agreement, not the Army. And if we can't work towards that, then why did you assign me to the portfolio of Minister Responsible for Native Affairs? I know my role. And you accept it because you believe. We all believe. Even if we make it through this, how are we ever going to go back to life the way it was? People in Oka would just as soon have us dead so that they can have their golf course. The SQ can come in and get us any time they want. We can't stay here day after day. No. We could go to Tyandinaga or Akwesasne. I have cousins there. How are we going to get past the police? They have medicine people here. Lasagna. Too bad your smuggling buddies can't help you now. We require that the Mohawks put down their guns and enter military custody until their trial in court. In return for the Army's guarantee, they will be treated with dignity. I've had to ask myself many, many times, what am I doing here? I don't have a wife, family. Very well leave here. I've got a life to build. I'd like to think I have a future out there, somewhere. I can't leave. It's not just Mohawks here. It's people from all over the country. Good Brad, Ojibwe from Saskatchewan. He's here with us. Jenny Jack, Tlingit from BC. How can I leave? Is it worth dying for? I mean, that's the real question, isn't it? And only you guys can answer that. The world is watching us. This struggle is really only just beginning. Native people all across this country are counting on what happens here. <sighs> we gotta decide about continuing on with this. People assumed it would be over in a week. It's been nine weeks. <laughs> we expected they'd want to sweep it under the rug as quickly as possible. Either hit us again or negotiate a quick settlement. And since they've done neither, I'm wondering, what am I going to be like after this? Now? Psych myself up for killing? For going to battle with armed forces? In the beginning, I wondered if I could do it. But now I know. But what 
am I gonna be like after? I mean, assuming I live through this. Exchanges of supplies within the perimeter are discontinued. Film, tape, nothing more in or out. Well, what about food? Clothes? It's getting cold at night. For your own safety, we strongly advise you to leave by nightfall. We haven't gained anything. Nothing's been accomplished. The government stopped negotiating and gave all the power to the military. We can still take it all the way. Make this statement. We're willing to die for this. There's no guarantee of getting the land back, even if we die. Things will be tense in the community for a very long time. You have to make a final decision. Whoever wants to leave, I'll take you out. There's still no guarantee of safety from the SQ. We could disappear into the court system and jails for a couple of years. I'm staying. We're not gonna walk out of here and surrender to the army or the SQ. We're not criminals. We've never surrendered before and we ain't gonna do it now. We're gonna live free or we're gonna die. If anyone decides to stay, it will be suicide. A true warrior finishes what he starts. That's what they do in Akwesasne. Either you don't want this to end for your own glory as a radical, or you're crazy. What do you want to do with him? been decided I can better help on the outside. After the disengagement and the laying down of arms, the warriors expect the federal and provincial governments to fulfill their promise to negotiate. We will disengage without any guarantees. We will take the governments of Canada and Quebec at their word. When? When will the disengagement be? They'll meet in their clan groups and decide. Excuse me. Yeah, I've got good coverage. We already have a bunker picked out for you. <laughs> we keep saying make love, not war, and you two took it to heart. <laughs> we wanted to do this because we don't really know how much longer we're going to live. You have such beautiful land here. And I'm honored to have been part of what's happened here in the Pines. I have my children here. And I've been putting them on the line. But I would do it all over again to show people that it's not over. Even if we have only one mile of land left, we have to fight for it. Some of us want to leave. Some of us want to stay. I want to stay. And I'm willing just to send my kids out and to stay back. But we can't split up. 
for those that are left for sure will be killed. If it was just for me, I would fight it out. But I have to think of the whole Confederacy. I have to think of the Mohawk Nation. Because we must go on. The Mohawk Nation must go on. So we, we have to get out of here. If we wait until Monday, we avoid being kept in SQ custody over the weekend. And the risk of beatings. We'll all march out. There will be no swearing. The kids will be in front. We'll all follow. Men will wear their camouflage outfits and walk out proud. Wait a minute. They're not just going to take us by the hand and lead us off someplace. You know we're going to end up screaming and swearing. And when they start pushing our men around, I'm going to do something. Dagla says we have to walk out the front entrance with our hands up, walk across the highway to be, quote, processed, on. and get on the military buses that'll be waiting. Do we just enter military custody obediently, or should we resist? No, we're not surrendering or giving up. We'll walk out that gate. They'll have to come and get us. Yes. People and their allies are leaving the treatment center today to go home to continue the struggle for the land.
radio. are being forced to their knees and shackled with plastic handcuffs. One of them is defiantly waving the Warrior Society flag back and forth above the soldiers' heads. A military bus is pulling up, and the Mohawks are about to be loaded inside. What have you accomplished with your laws, your armies, your jails? You lock us up for months, years, thinking that settles the matter. But your punishments will never change the question of land, or who we are as a people. shot LeMay. Where is the gun that killed him? He might as well kill me now. I ain't saying nothing. Who killed LeMay? Just a name. Name's all we need. Come on. Give me nothing. <laughs> this land is ours. Ours by right of possession. Ours as heritage. Given to us as a sacred legacy. It is the spot where our fathers lie. Beneath those trees, our mother sang our lullaby, and you would tear it from us and leave us wanderers at the mercy of fate. Shackles. 